gotta go this way. Make sure I'm going in the right direction. All right, guys. Got up quite early this morning. Did quite a bit of driving. But we're almost pulling up to the spot here. Just wanted to give you a quick little intro. I got an exciting adventure slash kind of challenge for me today. I'm gonna try to catch kokanee salmon, rainbow trout, and steelhead all in one day. Kind of like this salmonid trifecta or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Maybe we'll think of a, a challenge name. Throughout the day, we're gonna be doing quite a bit of fishing. Um, First off, we're gonna pull up to this little lake here, pull out the kayak, and see if we can get some kokanee trout. Um, and then we'll go from there. But anyways, first things first, we gotta get there. See you guys on the water. A little bit of a struggle this morning. Forgot the corn. Uh, back in the car, so I, I literally went almost to the spot and then had to go all the way back to the car. Luckily, I have this nice motored kayak, so no physical effort was needed, but it's kind of mentally draining and just, I don't know, I'm just wasting time. So it's already almost nine o'clock and I'm, I'm just starting fishing now. So anyways, we're fishing the same setup. I'll talk more about it later, but I kind of want to get it in the water. Same setup as last time I, I went uh, kokanee fishing, so nothing different here and get it in the water I'm going full steam ahead I'm at power 10 probably going like 3.7 something like that yeah 3.7 miles an hour so I gotta slow that down a little bit actually way too fast for trolling um, but I, I wanted to get back to the spot because I'm behind schedule Just fish to catch but uh, yeah that's looking good Let's get it in the downrigger here. All right. Get that clip in right here. Let's get this down. Start off at like 15 feet or so. All right, just try there. All right, that's in. Now we're fishing. Now I'm gonna set up my other rod and get that one in as well. And it is so nice to have this motored kayak so I can kind of just really focus on getting everything set up while I'm actually trolling it. It's, um, you know, it's really gonna improve my fishing time, I think, or increase my fishing time because before I had to, I don't know, I mean, I could pedal and tie stuff at the same time, but it's really hard to do that. You can't really focus fully um, on the trolling speed and all that stuff. So. With this, I mean, it's new to me, but for you guys with boats, it's probably uh, old news. But anyway, for me, this is just really a real luxury to be able to just set it to a certain speed. I can point it in a certain direction and then just kind of basically not pay attention at all to that setup and just focus on getting my other stuff ready. So it's a real luxury for me. I'm really enjoying it so far. Just another one of the benefits with this this new setup I got, so um, I kind of mentioned it before my last kayak fishing video, but um, I have this new kayak, if you're not aware already. And I'll be going through the uh, differences with this one and my last kayak in the next few videos here. So expect a, a little more of that in this video. Um, I'm just kind of setting things up here. We actually went over quite a few marks um, not too long ago. So I think there's some fish around here. I'm still not really to the end destination where I want to really focus my fishing efforts, but um, I think there might be some fish on the way there. So anyways, like I said, we're trolling already. I almost got this other rod set up all the way and then we'll be really fishing. Last time I came out here, um, it was kind of a, a, learning, a learning curve for me. So that was my first time kokanee fishing. Today, I think I have it a little more dialed in so i'll talk a little bit more about that too um, while i'm fishing today let's get some fish yeah it's kind of cold actually i was expecting it to be colder but it's still pretty cold i think it's like 30 maybe like 38 39 it's cold for me some of you guys might think that's warm if you live in colder areas but in Ca for california in the bay area at least that's pretty cold 
Oh, 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 there we go, there we go. Fish on. There we go, fish on. Oh no, did it come off? Oh no, it's still there, oh wow. Luckily I got my bait net. Oh, oh man, this might be harder than it looks. Got him. Perfect size for these kokanee. All right guys, just like last time, I mean, we're not fishing for giants, which is why I brought my uh, sand crab bait net. It's actually perfect size for these kokanee. Look at how it fits in there. Literally ideal. But uh, anyways, there's fish number one. We haven't even been trolling for like 10 minutes. It's a good sign. I know they're around, I've been marking them. And now I know they're biting. So anyways, let's get this in. We're hoping to make quick work of this. Cause like I said earlier, this isn't the only thing that we're doing today. We're hoping to do a few things. So anyways, there's one. The limit on these is 10. So I'm hoping to get 10 quick and keep moving. So anyways, there's fish number one. Oh shoot, we got another one. Is it still there? Yeah, I think so. Pop it off the downrigger. Yeah, it's still there. It's definitely still there. Doubled up. They're here. They're here. No time for the net. We just gotta flip this one in. And we're in. That's two. Oh, I almost forgot. That's my first, those are my first two fish on this kayak. All right. Hold on, hold on. All right, there's number two. We're moving right along. Like I said, with the motor, I can just do be doing my thing and that thing will be trolling just the right speed like it was before, so. Anyways, two fish in, eight to go. We officially have fish slime on the new kayak. Oh, oh I got one. <laughs> Shoot. Didn't even get my other rod. I was trying to set up the downrigger. I got one already. Oh man. This is gonna be wide open I think today for the kokanee at least. They're definitely chewing this morning. Get in here. All right, there's three. <laughs> We're loading them up quick. I literally cannot get my lines in fast enough. Let's see if I can get both rods in this time before one of them goes off. All right, got them both in. Now I can deal with these fish. So another nice thing about this motor is that I can actually, because it's GPS enabled, um, they can, well, one thing is I can spot lock, which means I can basically tell it to stay in the same place and it'll, like if the wind blows me off that spot, it'll motor me back to the spot based on the GPS location. Um, but another nice thing that this thing has is it can, I can point it in a direction, I can tell the motor to go in that direction, which means, you know, if I get, you know, off center, you know, off, like my direction comes off a little bit, like wind pushes me or I don't know, whatever happens, maybe I'm dragging one side and like the bow starts turning a little left or right or whatever, It'll, the motor will turn itself automatically and uh, turn me back to that direction. So that's a really nice thing because um, like from the boat ramp to here, I'm trolling all one direction. I didn't change any um, anything at all. And uh, basically, you know, I don't need to really watch it because there's no other boats out here. You know, if there's other boats, yeah, obviously you want to watch it and you still want to pay attention. But basically, I just point it in that direction, tell it to go, and it, I, it, I haven't even touched the controls since I since I started the troll. So um, that's another nice thing that this motor has that I'm still getting used to, even though it's so nice. And yeah, you saw with that fish a couple fish ago. Um, I had one and I was kind of messing around with it before. I probably would have been trolling, but not at a good speed. And I might not have caught that second fish. or might not have doubled up. So um, just another 
you know, benefit of having a motor. You can troll, you can do other things. You can do a lot more things at once, basically, before you're having to control it all with your feet, your hands, which is nice. I mean, I still like the challenge of that. Um, but this is nice to do too. I mean, look at me now, I'm just sitting back watching my rods, not doing anything. So yeah, if you're looking to get into a motor, that's another another benefit. There's definitely, definitely some uh, difficulties as well. So um, not to say that it's all glorious here. It took me a lot longer to set up today for one thing. But the way I think about it is the way, the time that I lost this morning, you know, the additional time it took for me to set up and everything, I feel like I'm gaining that again now because I'm, you know, you know, my, my chances of getting bit, the time when I have a good chance of getting bit is now increasing um, because of this motor. Um, like I was just saying, you know, that second fish, I might not have caught it before. So anyways, let's focus up. Been like almost five minutes since our last bite. Got to find the fish again. Oh, 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 there we go. There we go, there's one. Oh man. Oh yeah. There we go. Oh, it came off. Shoot. There we go. There we go. Yeah, up there. There we go. There we go. Oh, that feels. That one's fighting good. Well, I think I hooked it a little funny, that's why. Oh yeah, there we go. Number four. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, whoops, it just popped it off. Oh well. There's number four. Ooh, that one wasn't going nowhere. Both hooks got him. Oh, oh, one hit this. I think. Yeah, one hit it. On the surface. <laughs> I popped it off the downrigger by accident and one hit it on the surface. Look at that. Doubled up. So that's number five. Oh, again, this one wasn't going anywhere. That both hooks in the front of the mouth there. That must have been a good spot right there. I got one, I got one. I got one on this rod already. Shoot. Mayhem, boys. Mayhem. Is it still there? Yeah, still there. I literally cannot even get both rods in. Got fish all over the place. That's six. Got one already. Got one already. Got one already. Get in here, get in here. If only all fishing was like this. Well, guys, this is weird. Literally, like you saw, I caught bang, bang, bang. I caught seven in like, like 30 minutes maybe. Maybe 45 at the most. Like every, you know, every time I dropped it down, it was getting hit within a few minutes. But now it's been about 30 minutes and I haven't got a single bite. I don't know what happened. I checked my bait, everything looks good. We're basically trolling the same area. I'm still marking fish, but for some reason they're not biting. So I don't know, I don't know what the problem is. Maybe the bite just shut off. It's kind of weird, it could, I mean, it could happen. Bite just shuts off like that. Maybe that's what happened, I don't know. Maybe they got spooked, because I was catching so many of them. But we'll figure it out. We just gotta find them, figure it out. Either they're, maybe they're deeper. I don't think they're deeper. I'm still marking them like, oh, there we go. There we go. Look at that, right on cue. Oh, I think it came off. 
Oh, dang, it came off. All right, well, they're here. I found them again. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go. Stay on there, stay on there. For some reason, I've been losing a few more this later half of the day. Maybe they're getting a little more spunky. This one's coming in hot, coming in hot. There we go. There's number eight. We're working our way there. Here we go. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. Boat flip. That's number nine. Oh, that looks like a little bit better one. Number nine, coming at you. Come on, stay on there. Stay on there. It's gonna be the one. So with kokanee, one of the things that you have to watch out for, they're pretty soft mouth. So you can see this is an ultra, ultra light rod, which is perfect for kokanee. Um, it really absorbs all those head shakes. This is, even though they're not, you know, they're pretty small, they're not pulling drag, they're, they're head shaking and thrashing all over the place. I mean, a lot of times that'll allow them to, the hook to come off. So having a nice, flexible rod like this is really helpful, but let's get this one in before we lose him. All right, we did it. That's a nice chunky one to finish it off. That's the limit. All right, well, we got our limit of kokanee, but that's kind of the just beginning of my day, hopefully. Hopefully I can put a few more fish on camera. So now I'm gonna try trolling for rainbow trout. Um, the only problem, that's probably gonna be the hardest one of the day, to be honest, because um, the people that I know that have fished this lake more frequently than I have say that rainbow trout are hard to find here. Wow, marking so many kokanee here. Anyways. Gotta focus, no more kokanee. I've already limited out on those. We're gonna try to catch rainbow trout. So I'm gonna try top lining this Rapala, Fire Tiger Rapala, one of my favorite colors um, on one rod. And then on my other rod, I'm gonna put this spoon. It's called a speedy shiner. I'm gonna put this on the downrigger, drop it down a few, I don't know, 20 feet or so. If I see some marks, maybe I'll change up the depth. But um, yeah, it's kind of kind of like a Hail Mary. I don't know, rainbow trout are hard to find in this lake, but if I can just get one, then I'd call it success. So anyways, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make one pass up that way, and then one pass down that way, and I'm gonna call it, because actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook up one of those kokanee, so I'm getting quite hungry, and it's right about lunchtime now, so I'm gonna try cooking up one of those kokanee, give me some energy, but first, let's see if we can catch a rainbow trout. All right, I'll clean up all my stuff for my kokanee adventure. See if these rods can go off and get me a rainbow. Oh, no trout today. Oh, I'm getting hungry, so I brought some briquettes out here. And I brought some matches, so I'm gonna light these and then go clean up my kayak and then let these kind of ash over and heat up and then I'm gonna cook up a couple of these coconut. So, anyways, if you've ever seen these, these are just like infused, lighter fluid infused briquettes. You don't need any lighter fluid for that, so you can just light them as is. So we'll kind of put these in a pile here and um, hopefully they light. I don't know, I'm not too confident in these matches right here, but. There we go. All right, so we're gonna let that kind of heat up and ash over, um, and then I'll show you how we're gonna cook these kokanee. All right guys, I'm gonna get this thing started. Looks like they're coals are ashing over quite nicely. And I'm gonna do I'm literally just stealing this recipe directly from Outdoor Chef Live. So if you wanna check out his video, he actually did this out on the kayak um, on the water and served it up and it's pretty good. So I'm gonna to try to do it myself. So I just got two of my fish here and I got two skewers. 
I'm gonna try to skewer these up. There's one. And there's another one. And then all I'm gonna do with these, got a little bit of salt right here. Put a nice amount of salt, generous, both sides. And then a little bit in the, in the belly there. You can see it's got really nice orange meat. Basically, pretty similar to ocean salmon. Um, but anyways, this is kokanee. And then we're just gonna throw it right on the, oh, right on the grill or on the coals or whatever. Same thing with this one, just salt. A little bit in the stomach area. One more look at that pink meat. Perfect. All right, toss this one on here as well. All right, we'll let those grill for about maybe 10 minutes, flip it, 10 minutes on the other side, and then they should be good to eat. You can hear all that sizzling. That's all that fat that's in the skin and in the meat too. The salmon's a really oily fish, so um, it's gonna have tons of oh, great fat inside there, and that's what you hear sizzling on the flames there. Ooh, look at that, it's grilling quite nicely. All right guys, I think these are done here. There it is, it's my, I don't know if you call this grilled, grilled salmon? Roasted salmon, whatever it is. I don't know, like I said, I stole this recipe from Outdoor Chef Life, so if you wanna see the real master behind the uh, the recipe, go check out his channel. I'll leave that video from him linked in the description below, but there you go. Here's my lunch, oh. So good, the only thing I forgot that he had when you made this was some lemon or lime. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, kokanee is surprisingly good for freshwater fish. I think it's the closest thing to ocean salmon. I like it better than the um, than trout, at least that's for sure. Obviously, still not as good as ocean salmon, but I don't know. I don't think you can compete with that, especially not in freshwater. The skin too, nice and crispy. Hmm. Just a nice little piece of meat there. Yeah, you can just eat this right off the bone. Like a rib. All right, there's one carcass. One kokanee down. Luckily I have one more waiting right behind it. Oh, this hits the spot. I haven't hardly eaten anything today. I was waiting for this, this meal. I didn't scale it, so the scales are still there. But if you scaled it first, I think it would be even better. Still good though. Coconut are pretty small scales, so. like a little crunchy chip. But anyways, I realized I never showed you the kokanee rig that I was using today. I got too caught up in catching them all. So we're using a little flasher. It's pretty similar to um, the way you control for salmon in the ocean, but everything's just kind of scaled down. Smaller flasher with about two to three foot liter to a little hoochie, like a mini hoochie. The ones I was using today were pink, but people use all kinds of different colors. And then we just tip that with a little piece of corn. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I don't know. That's what people use and it seems to work. So I just go along with it. Worked for me today, so there must be something to it. 
Um, and yeah, that's about it. Trolling it on the downrigger. I was dropping it down anywhere from like 10 feet, anywhere all the way down to like 15 feet. Or no, sorry, from 10 anywhere to like 25. And uh, actually, one of them even hit it on the surface. I'm not, that was, I feel like it was right below, like less than five feet down because I popped it off the downrigger. No fish was on there. I just popped it off. And then as it was like drifting behind the boat, fish grabbed it. So they're pretty close to the surface. I'd say surface down to 30 feet or so. Somewhere in that range. That's what we're using to catch them all. But man, this is good. I probably could have eaten like five of these, to be honest, but a lot of nutrients in one of these little fish. As promised at the beginning of the video, the next uh, next leg of this challenge or adventure or whatever is steelhead. So there's the second carcass, totally demolished. Um, oh, missed a little piece here. We started off with kokanee. That was a success, major success. I mean, I caught a limit within like two hours. Tried for rainbows for a little while and I didn't get any. I don't know, I, I've heard that this lake is really, really tough for rainbows. So I wasn't too surprised there. And now the next leg is steelhead. So I got a little bit of a drive and I gotta pack up my kayak still, so I gotta get moving. It's about, I think it's probably like 1.30, maybe two o'clock now. So we gotta get rolling. I'm not gonna have much time on steelhead, but as you've seen in my previous videos, the evening is actually a really good time. So right now, you can catch them in the middle of the day too. It's not like you can't catch them, but now is not the ideal time. So I feel like I'm gonna hit it right Hopefully, fingers crossed, um, as the bite's getting getting started. So, anyways, let's pull out this fire and then uh, get on the road, hit the steelhead. Let's go. I don't know if you guys can see it. I think it's coming through in the camera. I don't know why, but this lake, the water looks so green, like bluish greenish. I, I don't know why. It's not like there's, it almost looks like there's like chemicals in the water or something, but I don't think that's the case. I don't know what, what the reason is or the cause for it is, but pretty cool. Pretty cool lake out here. But anyways, like I said, let's go hit some steelhead. All right, last stop of the day, the river. We'll see if we can top today off with a nice little steelhead here. That would literally make this day complete for sure. I'm just wading over to the little spot that I like to fish. And then we're gonna start working it. It's about, I think it's about 3.30 now. So we've got about maybe two hours of fishing time. Plenty of time to hook a steelhead if there's one in here. Um, we'll definitely work this area for a little bit. And if no luck here, we might try one more spot. But I think, I think there's some fish here, so. Oh yeah, no one's in the spot, so that's a good sign. That means it's open for us. Just gotta get through these bushes. Oh no. What did I do here? Just get through this little spot. Just working our way across. Always a little nervous waiting with a camera in my hand. This is not waterproof, but just gotta, just gotta send it, I guess. Send it. Oh, there's like no one fishing here. Hmm. Usually this place is pretty crowded. I'm surprised there's no one here. All right. See if there's a fish here. Time to get my first cast in. While I was getting ready, tying up my leader here, I saw a fish jump like four or five times. I'm assuming it's the same fish, if not even better. 
but I saw it jump right in that little area right there. It's casting right above it there. And I'm gonna let the current drift it right down into that zone where he is. I think he hit it. I was mending my line. All right, well, we'll come back there. I'll let it sit for a little bit. Maybe that fish will come back in there. And I'll work down river a little bit. Maybe, a, maybe I can get one down here. I think it's on. Small guy. Oh, there he goes. Now he's fighting. Don't think he realized he was hooked. There we go. That's a steelhead. All right, guys. There we go. That is a nice little steelhead. Not huge, but that's definitely a steelhead nonetheless. Um, nice little hatchery hen. You can see it's got no adipose fin there. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep this one. Here in California, you're legally allowed to keep um, two steelhead as long as they're hatchery and as long as you're fishing in the river. So this one you can see has no adipose fin in the back and that's how you know that it's from the hatchery. And uh, yeah. All right, we got kokanee and we got steelhead. I did wanna do a catch and cook steelhead but I kind of already did a catch and cook in this video, so maybe I'll save that for another video. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments. But anyways, there's a nice one there. We worked for it. I didn't get one in that original little spot while I was working, so I moved a little bit downstream, or sorry, a little bit upstream, and found this guy right here. So thank you guys for watching. It's been a fun day. Another day in the life of a diehard fisherman, I guess. But one last thing, if you're interested in that kayak that I was using for kokanee, that thing worked like like a wonder it was just it was perfect for kokanee fishing so if you're interested in learning more about it check the link in the description um, that'll give you all you need to know about that kayak so thank you guys for watching we'll see you on the next one